I believe that either you understand the long-term adoption trend of blockchain technology or you don't. And if you don't understand it and don't appreciate it, then you should not be participating in the market. What's the biggest secret or the first step to understanding how to strategically invest in blockchain, blockchain technology? Um, yeah, obviously, you know, nothing we talk about is investment advice, but we see the blockchain space uh, from a very different lens than uh, most people do, um, I believe. And I think a lot of the conversation that happens uh, around dinner tables or even out around investment committee boardrooms uh, is all focused on the price of different blockchain assets. And I think that's the wrong approach. Um, you know, all the conversations you'll have are whether Bitcoin's $40,000 today or $20,000 today. And that really doesn't make a difference because if you are in a secular trend, if you're in a long term adoption trend, then short term price movements are quite irrelevant to the long term story. So I believe that either you understand the long term adoption trend of blockchain technology or you don't. And if you don't understand it and don't appreciate it, then you should not be participating in the market. Um, it's highly volatile, um, very dangerous if you don't understand what you're doing. Um, and so you should only do it because you understand the long term disruption that the technology can have. OK, let me see if I encapsulate that. So it's first thing is shifting the conversation, and the mindset from price versus versus trends and versus understanding the business or the value behind the blockchain technology. Is that a fair summary? That's absolutely it. Yep. OK, so let me ask you the second question. So. Well, actually, let's just go to the second secret, right? So what's the next step? So once you shift from focusing on price to understanding the, the, the value and the business and the and, and what it's going to do. Now, what's the second part to to investing in, in, in uh, blockchain technology? Yeah, so we believe that the number one, um, you know, thing that we've learned over the last few years of doing this is that adoption is everything. Um, it, th that's true even for, you know, traditional technology companies. Uh, the reason Uber has value is not because they have the best application or the best technology. It's because they have the most users and the most drivers using their platform. Um, that kind of uh, competitive advantage is even more pronounced on a blockchain network because the technology is open source. So anybody can copy paste the technology and, and use it as their own. But what, what is your main durable competitive advantage is not how great your technology is, but, but how many users you have and how many sticky users keep coming back. Got it. So it's, a, it's the adoption. And what has Uber been able to do um, to attract more users and more people using their platform. Yeah, uh, you know, Uber has uh, done a great job at sort of uh, going across the world, going against regulation in many spaces and showing users the value of their platform. Uh, they've created jobs in times when countries needed jobs, like the COVID, uh, you know, the, the pandemic. Uh, they have given users access to uh, services that they never thought was possible. And one of the important things to understand about companies like Uber is people usually underestimate them throughout their lives. Uh, when, when people started thinking about Uber as an investment, they probably thought, hey, you know, the total addressable market here is the size of the taxi market. But what ended up happening was because Uber made that transportation easier, cheaper, and more accessible, they actually expanded the market for taxis. People that never took taxis before take Ubers now. Right. And, and so a lot of times it's, it's very easy to sort of uh, forget that these markets are not just the traditional markets. But a lot of times when you add technology to it, you actually expand the market far beyond uh, the traditional competition. Yeah, that makes sense. I think of something like even like a blockbuster versus Netflix. Right. I imagine there's more people watching, consuming content today because of the ease of access and how friendly it is. And if, um, so that's that's growing the pie versus just taking from the pie. Mm -hmm. Is that a fair summary so far? Absolutely. Yeah. OK, so now let's apply it to blockchain technology, right? So we have we have understanding that the actual business and the technology mm -hmm. behind it and the, this, the value it brings to the everyday person or, or business or whatever. The second thing is the adoption. So helping the users and the people understand and actually use it. So what would be the third step to this? Yeah, the third step uh, would be to understand that when you like a company like Netflix or you like a company like Tesla, uh, there's very obvious assets that you can buy to sort of back that company and bet on their success. Uh, but that's not so simple in the blockchain space. 
Uh, blockchain assets are unique and all of them are different from each other. There's no set standard. So there, it's not necessarily the case if, for example, you believe in the Ethereum network. Uh, you believe that that's going to get adopted further. It's not necessarily the case that you go buy the Ethereum token and that gives you exposure to the growth of the Ethereum network. Some of those digital assets are really strongly connected with the underlying growth of the business, but many of them are actually very loosely connected to the underlying growth of the business. And so you could be absolutely right about the growth of the business, but see no value being passed through to the actual uh, digital asset involved. So you cannot take the structure and the relationship between the company and the digital asset for granted. You have to really dig deep to understand whether there's any real economic relationship at all. Got it. Interesting. So, um, yeah, a lot there, right? It's it's not it's not a uh, you can't just put blockchain in a box. I think is what you're saying, right? And you've got to really underwrite and look at it on an individual basis, right? You, mm -hmm. Just because you're buying the coin doesn't necessarily support the blockchain. Absolutely. Yeah.